Hi, I thought I'd do a video answering a Twitter question, even though I've already answered it uh, on Twitter, I thought it might be of interest to others, and I wanted to test out my new rig here. It's not fully finished yet, but I thought I'd do a video trying it. I've got my pen tablet here hooked up to my Blackmagic ATEM, and I'm doing this all sitting with this backdrop. Let me know what you think instead of over at my uh, regular desktop. Leave comments down below what you think of this form factor. It's not polished yet, but eh, we'll get around to it. Anyway, let's see what got here um this question comes from um ian hanshin uh follow me on twitter by the way ask me questions on there all day every day it's all i do answering questions on twitter um and it, he's posted this and i thought this was really interesting uh it says every once in a while i see a board like this i figure maybe it's for some kind of noise or decoupling purpose or something but perhaps someone could tell me uh if this has a name and more about it well i don't know about a name for it, but he's talking about, what he's talking about here is the uh, bypass uh, caps here and how they're all like A, because there's a lot of them and they're all neatly surrounding the chips as you can see here and, um, and all the passive, just the sheer number of passives and how they've laid out in sort of a grid arrangement. So let's take a look here. So I'll go over to my uh, drawboard uh, PDF program for those who don't know, it's an Aussie uh, program and uh, I can just draw on this. So let's take a look at what's actually going on here, okay, well, first of all, what is this board? Uh, it dates from, you can see it down here, haven't figured out how to pan with this thing yet. Um, it's from uh, 2004, so this would have been designed early 2000s, so we're talking at least 20 uh, years ago. It's a bit younger than I uh, expected. I thought this was like a late 80s or something. But anyway, what this is, is it's a VGA card, apparently, with uh, some video capture as well. So presumably, this is your VGA output here, and these are video capture. I don't know what kind of video inputs. If you know, leave it in the comments down below. I'll put a link down to a page which has info on this, and it's a uh, Super Savage IXC, and uh, it's an 86C584. Uh, As you can see, manufactured 26 week um, O2 here, so it's a VGA uh, chipset, and obviously the, the Altera Cyclone up here is probably doing like the video. Well, no, this is probably the video capture. Uh, yeah, it's a Philips. I can see the Philips symbol. I can't make out the symbol. So this is probably the, this is, this would be the capture uh, memory for the video input. Anyway, this is, and uh, anyway, let's not worry about the details of the card. Why does the layout look like this? Why are all these, by look, look at all these bypass caps. Why are they all surrounding the chip like this? And why are, why is everything like in rows and columns like this, it's all beautifully, neatly laid out. Why is this the case? Well, there's uh, several reasons for this. Uh, the first of all uh, is this: this appears to be a single-sided load. There are load. There are a couple of components on the back, but they're not populated. Uh, he didn't post a photo, but I found another photo online, and they're not populated. So you've got to uh, think of the mindset of the designer of this board, not only the PCB designer, but also the actual designer of the circuitry, right? Typically there's multiple engineers on a uh, design like this, especially in one of this uh, complexity, and there'll be, you know, software and firmware people, and there'll be, you know, uh, uh, production people, uh, probably not people, but, you know, at least a production person involved, and there'll be a PCB designer usually, and then there'll be the designer of the actual circuit who'll be doing the schematic and, you know, everything else. So multiple engineers so you've got to put yourself in the mindset now when they're manufacturing this they probably wanted to lower the cost so they went for a single sided load so all the components are on one side and the problem is when you've got a uh, BGA uh, package like this and you've only got components on one side you've got all your little individual pins in there okay please excuse the crudity of the model didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it you can see how my tablet is actually uh, touch sensitive so get different size pins bloody bga chips anyway right so you've got all your pins under your bga uh chip like that now of course a chip of this complexity will have multiple power pins and multiple ground pins and the multiple power pins they could be for different voltage cores uh inside of this, though this one i haven't looked at the data sheet can't seem to find the data sheet readily for it but let's just assume it's just a single uh rail okay it's not that uh complex but you've got multiple power pins and ideally you would have have 
a bypass or the recommendation from the manufacturer will be a bypass pin, uh, capacitor per pin. Or even if it's not recommended in the data sheet, that will often be the mindset of uh, designers. It's just sort of like the done thing. It's the de facto standard. Oh yeah, if you have a power pin, you have a bypass pin with it. You don't always need it. It's kind of like one of those belt and braces things. You're just like, nobody ever got fired for putting a bypass cap on a pin. Unless you pinch in pennies and you're doing months in. I'll have to link up my video uh, months in and reducing uh, capacitors in a circuit until they stop working. It's very interesting stuff. The designer of this thing probably just went, well, I like however many uh, bypass uh, caps are here probably is how many power pins it actually has. Some of them aren't. Uh, bypass caps, but all of them are. They're probably all like 100N. They don't look any, and remember, we're talking a long time ago, so none of this, you know, 10 microfarad bypass ceramic uh, capacitor rubbish, right? Back then, you know, one mic was like big. Um, so, yeah, so there's no huge value. Uh, so if they want to bulk uh, capacitance, that's why they're using these uh, tantalums around here. So that's the first reason what's happened here is that the designer has simply used one bypass capacitor per pin, and then they threw the schematic over the cubicle wall to the PCB designer and the PCB designer's got their schematic, they import it and, uh, and then, you know, they've got all their parts and they're laying and they're starting to lay out the board and they go, well, I've got to put all the bypass caps and, well, somebody told me from production that we can only afford a single-sided load so I can't put the bypass capacitors where they should be which would actually be, like, on the bottom here. So you would actually have, like, you know, a bypass cap right next to the pin and then you'd have the via typically not a uh, via in pad um, but you know it'll be very close to it and this is why flip over any modern board and if you see a bunch of bypass caps there you almost certainly on the back of an FPGA um, or a you know a BGA micro my pens died oh goodness so yeah, usually you add bypass caps on the bottom of uh, the pins. That's as close to the pin as possible. You minimize the trace inductance and everything else. So in this particular case, they, there was no option, right? The bypass pins uh, caps had to go around outside the chip like this. And of course, you've got some like excess space in here, but this is probably, once again, this could be a production uh, requirement in that the pick and place machines that they were using at the particular uh, assembly house, for example, might have had requirements that, um, you know, hey, we don't want caps close to uh, the chip, or we don't want, this is why the footprints are actually quite large as well. If you have a look at the size of the footprints, right, <laughs> this is, geez, you can drive a truck through there, right? So there, uh, once again, this could come from an in-house uh, requirement, for example, where they have an approved footprint. And this is a thing in big companies. You will have a certain, you know, if you've got an 0603 or an 0805 cap, for example, you will have an approved footprint for a specific uh, contract manufacturer for your board, for example. It'll be all set up and done. And then they might have, you know, they just uh, went, well, I've got to use that. And I've got to have uh, the spacing requirement as well. So that could have been driven by the manufacturer. Although this looks quite large and spaced out. So I would say that probably, you know, a good bet is that the PCB designer just, well, they had room and they liked to lay it, you know, and they didn't want the silk screens overlapping and stuff like that, you know, because that's sort of like ugly. They don't want them overlapping. And so they spaced them out nicely around the uh, chip like this and could have put them a bit closer. But as I said, there might have been requirements for that. So you simply place them all your bypass caps around the outside and you want to have them all in line because you're, you know, you take pride in your PCB layout. So you want to have them, you know, in nice vertical uh, and horizontal arrangements. And then if we zoom in there, you can actually see they've got the vias there and there, like either side there. Uh, like, well, that one, oh yeah, that one's there. I don't know why they didn't put it there. Oh, geez. You know, they went to all this effort to make it aesthetically pleasing and they put the put the via there. I would have been disappointed in myself if I did that. You know, symmetry, come on. Um, <laughs> anyway, so these these uh, caps are obviously being via stitched directly down to the ground and power layer. There's probably just one power layer on here. It's probably all just 5 volt uh, logic or something like that back then. Um, or it could there could be an extra 3.3 volt layer in there, but eh, who knows? right anyway so the other reason for uh the amount of <laughs> the sheer amount of bypass caps like all in here like this like you know there's just tons of them like this is because there was uh no pushback from the pcb designer the pcb designer if they knew you know design a layout which a pcb designer 
often does, although not always. I've worked with uh, top-notch PCB designers who come from a drafting background. They've got no electronics knowledge at all. But you pick up, um, you know, you do pick up stuff over the years. This is back when, you know, things weren't as advanced as they are now. And, you know, you've got to understand signal integrity and all sorts of stuff, right? It's not that an engineer can't do a PCB layout. It's just, it, it helps if you have. So there was probably no pushback from the PCB designer going, hey, look, come on, you're making me do a single-sided load. We don't need 20 bypass caps. You don't need a power supply bypass cap per pin. It's just going to be sufficient to rely on some bulk decoupling. I, you know, like you might put one bulk decoupling cap here, just, you know, like surround it. Because if it's one just big power plane, like you're not optimizing your inductance, you know, and getting close to the power pins anyway. So, you know, you could have said, oh, you know, just a, a, a couple here, a couple here, and a couple here, just to you know, make it nice and dandy, right? And you don't need a cap per pin. So there was probably no pushback from the PCB designer there, or, but this should have been picked up by the actual designer. They should have, you know, they should know, right? If you're designing this, you should have a, uh, like a thought in mind of, you know, a layout. You should be thinking about layout when you're actually designing this thing. If they knew it was a uh, single sided load or that was their intention, I would clearly, they wanted this to be single sided load or definitely, you know, you would have put the bypass caps on the bottom of the chip down here. There's no, absolutely no doubt about that you would have uh, done that. So obviously they were constrained with that. So you would have sort of like gone back to the drawing board a bit and you know, rethought your bypassing strategy. And the same things happened over here on like these, these chips over here, right? Uh, some of these, like there's a whole row of bypass caps there. Right, there's a whole bunch of them, not all of them might be uh, bypass uh, caps, but a good lot of them will be. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's another one there, that, that one's got two vias actually. Instead of one, they're trying to lower their inductance there by using the uh, two vias. But uh, yeah, once again, they probably had like a bypass cap per pin, but because this is a quad flat pack like this, you can actually be near the pins like this so you know there, there's reason to do that but we've got another BGA chip up here and probably you know look they've got some uh, larger ones here are these like uh, 1206s or something actually they look to be output from the there's a regulator there yeah is that 3.3 I don't know we can't see that but yeah you're going to have a similar sort of problem around that BGA and you know these bypass caps here are probably from the Altera uh, Cyclone they've got a couple of more caps over here but once again that is a quad uh, flat pack, but uh, why have them in all these nice grid arrangements like this? Well, this could be done by an old-time PCB designer who was, you know, old school from, you know, 70s and 80s who's used to laying stuff out in grids. That's if you just look at any old-school board. In fact, I probably got one. Just so happened to have an old-school board here, and this is how it was done back in the uh, day. You would, all the chips would be in like row arrangements like this and they're all the correct orientation so that the auto routing of these boards or even if you manual routed it um all of the traces on the top for example would go in one direction and all the traces on the bottom would go in the other direction i don't know no you might not be able to see through this solder mask but i've shown this in uh, uh previous videos where yeah all, all the traces will go horizontal here and all the traces will go vertical here and that just makes laying out the board easier and i'd say that uh, somebody has, you know, gone in with a similar mentality here of just everything needs to be in nice rows. And also, PCB designers, they love symmetry and they love just the aesthetics of boards. And I reckon the PC, I, I would have been quite proud of this board, right? It didn't, like, apart from, like, just from a, an aesthetic uh, point of view, having all the caps in nice rows and uh, columns and rows like this, it's just, it's beautiful. So yeah, there's quite a few reasons there. One, this is a single-sided load, so that would have uh, determined various things. B, there was no pushback from the PCB designer to go, hey, look, come on, this is a bit silly. We don't need one bypass cap per pin. We can get away with a lot less, right? This is just getting nuts. So uh, three, they might have had uh, requirements uh, for spacing requirements and things like that from uh, the uh, assembly house. And then they might have had standard uh, footprints, company foot approved footprints uh, to work from company approved space ins and DRC requirements for the board and you know all sorts of like older school requirements that might have been carried on from like a decade earlier but they still use them today and they might have the PCB designer might have still been working around those uh, DRC 
see constraints and stuff like that. And then, well, if you told I've got to lay out this board and here's all these caps, yeah, why not? Just, you know, making me nice, neat rows and <laughs> columns like this. And it just, that's why it looks like this. So yeah, there are like, you know, half a dozen sort of uh, reasons that go into something like this, good or bad. Um, as I said, like you really, you don't need this many bypass caps. You don't, in this particular case, having a bypass cap per pin just because you defined it so on the schematic and that was, you know, uh, like the done thing. It's just, no, no. Somebody should have, you know, stopped and thought about uh, this board and gone, eh, yeah, nah, um, we can get away with a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> bypass caps than all these and look they didn't even have room for the silk screen designators either you'll you'll notice like like they put u17 here right there's a little fiducial um actually they've done that fiducial that fiducial's done on the silk screen layer you don't do fiducials on your silk screen layer because you can get offsets on your uh on your silk screen compared to your copper layers and really the alignment of a fid a fiducial um, mark is a, a fiducial mark is a reference mark used by the camera for the pick and place um, machine so that it knows where to accurately place uh, the components and you don't put that on your silk screen layer that's a <laughs> golden rule you put it on your copper layer um, so that uh, yeah it's more accurate so uh, then any um, offset errors on your silk screen and your copper don't matter. Oh yeah, there we go. I totally missed that 3.3 volt uh, rail there. So yeah, and then there's another adjustable rail there. So there's, you know, there's probably some like um, internal, you know, uh, sort of like ground uh, in there, probably just for that one chip and the bypass caps do that. And you just don't need all those. It's just, it's, it, it's just silly stuff. Um, just a couple of bulk decoupling caps would have been fine for something like this. And this is not, you know, really huge modern, like, you know, high performance like you're used to uh, these days. And really the only way you can actually get better performance is, as I said, put them on the bottom of the uh, chip under there, right near the pin, and then have a via going uh, straight up or vias going straight up to uh, the balls. Um, and then, you know, you're actually bypassing individual uh, pins. And then, you know, you at least get some benefit there. Otherwise, from an inductive point of view, you're talking about like one big solid, you know, 3.3 volt rail and ground will go over the whole board, of course. I don't think you'd have split uh, planes on something like maybe up here. Like if you've got like if this is like is, is an analog uh, section or something like well, you know, something like that. If that's your analog section with your video uh, ins or whatnot, you know, you might have separate split grounds up there or something like that. But yeah, but generally um, speaking, yeah, like <laughs> just couple of bypass caps would have been fine on something like that you know just a you know one one over on the far side here one here just a bulk uh you can get away with bulk because there's a lot of uh debate and if you go and actually use the uh simulation tools to actually try and simulate bypassing which is really advanced really expensive software tools you can actually do it um but there's specialized um signal analysis uh tools to do this and yeah you can often find that well just one bulk decoupling cap is going to work something like that unless you're talking about real like modern complex fpgas with multiple things and they have like you know 50 page documents of just how to power up and bypass and sequence the power rails on a modern fpga or a modern processor or something like that it's really uh, strict but yeah maybe this uh, vga chip i don't you know it's it's kind of like old school uh compared to modern stuff and you could have just got away with a couple of bypass caps but anyway there's some re possible reasons why this thing looks the way it does so i thought that was an interesting question if you got other uh you know theories why it looks the way it does leave them in the comments down below and let me know please in the comments how you like this new setup it's not polished yet but eh, it's good enough for australia catch you next time